Motor Week is made possible by Rock Auto and Tire Rack. Trucks for all reasons, mid-size, extended cab, sporty pickups. And which one does it better? Find out from our special pickup comparison test coming up next on Motor Week. Television's Automotive Magazine is proudly brought to you by Prestone Antifreeze and Coolant and by Prestone Super Flush Products. Your host for Motor Week, John Davis. Hello and welcome again to Motor Week. Glad you're with us. I've got a question for you. What's the most popular type of vehicle on the road today? Some type of car, you might say? Well, five years ago, maybe. But today, pickup trucks are where it's at. Nearly three out of every 10 new vehicles bought by U.S. consumers are pickup trucks or other light utility models. And why not? Pickup trucks are more versatile and cost much less than comparably equipped cars, even when loaded with options. And trucks with elongated cabs and jump seats do provide reasonable comfort for growing families. Well, those are enough reasons for us to take a closer look at this American phenomenon by comparing five sporty extended cab mid-size pickup trucks. The two domestic titans of the pickup market sent us their best, Chevrolet, its S10 Tahoe Maxi Cab, and Ford, this Ranger STX Super Cab. And we have three imports, this Isuzu Pup LS Space Cab, Mazda sent us this B2000 SE5 Cab Plus, and Nissan this SE King Cab. Base prices range between eight and $10,000, but we wanted each model to come with the flashiest trim, largest engine, and most popular options. So as tested prices range from nine to almost 14,000. We've set up five separate categories and we'll give you our first through fifth choices in each one. Starting with sporty appearance, that includes styling and the quality of body fit and trim and paint finish inside and out. Utilities next, practically speaking, the basis for any pickup choice. But for us, we also want to know how each can hold a growing family of four. It's just as important as how many sheets of plywood each can carry. We can't leave out performance, of course. If pickups are now doing family duty, they'd better be able to accelerate, handle, and stop with reasonable proficiency. That leads us to everyday drivability. We'll judge interior noise, smoothness and control of highway ride, seating comfort, and naturally mileage. Finally, affordability, a big reason for pickup popularity. But even here, value for the dollar can be deceiving. We'll look at the amount of standard equipment and the cost of major options. Our overall winner will be decided by how well each truck performs in the individual categories. By the way, this year we're offering a transcript of our comparison and we'll have our address for that later. But enough talk, let's pick things up and find out just why these pickups are being called trucks for all reasons. First category, sporty appearance and the lead-off hitter, this Chevrolet S10 Maxi Cab. It looks tough but handsome and is easy on the eye. Rounded corners make it look more compact than it actually is. It also wears the cab extension well. We like the Tahoe package, even if the metallic paint was splotchy and dull. Inside, the S10 is airy and expensive looking, and the novel instrument cluster is both original and functional. The Ford Ranger Super Cab looks the most like a traditional pickup, so its cab extension looks like just that. The big chrome STX seems out of place in today's market. We did like the stripe package that goes with it, but not its exposed and uneven edges at the tailgate, nor the fact that the cargo box was offset to one side. The Ranger did have the best paint job, but those other quality flaws cost the Ranger a lot of points. The plastic wood interior also drew mixed reviews, yet the no-nonsense gauges were easy to scan. Isuzu's pickup has always been called the Pup. 
Our space cab, meaning spacious, looks tall, too much so for the low window line, so the overall styling looks unbalanced. Red space cab stripes are supposed to add a more sporting look, but end up being gaudy. On the other hand, the LS lower body panel and the tailgate graphics look just fine. Good paint job, too. The pup's interior looks cheaper and more dated than the others, but dash controls are well integrated and the main cluster is clear with white on black markings. Mazda's B2000 Cab Plus has very modern styling, including a down-sloping front end, but the long cab add-on is squared off like the Fords. We cared even less for the overdone SE5 stripe kit. They run at confusing angles and clash with the styling. The black paint had a deep shine, but also plenty of orange peel. Inside, this Mazda is utilitarian, but with better seat fabrics than on many cars. The dash is functional and the orange gauge is clear. The Nissan King cabs are advertised as hard bodies, with fenders that look like they're on steroids. But that macho styling isn't totally pleasing to the eye, even though the Nissan has the most American look of the imported group. Indeed, it was designed in California and ours assembled in Tennessee. The SE trim means a gray lower body stripe. Matching alloy wheels are part of a sports package. But the folding into the roof quarter windows and doors make the cab extension look carefully designed. That spacious cab is well appointed, though like a lot of Japanese cars, the dash looks chopped up. Gauges are clear, and like the Mazdas, glaring with day glow orange. Now, these smaller trucks may carry more folks than fiberboard, but utility is still a key category. The Chevy S10 Maxi Cab has a six foot, one inch cargo box, but like the rest, it flunked the traditional four by eight foot plywood test. It has the smallest standard payload, 1,000 pounds, but Chevy says that's 1,000 usable pounds, no matter how many heavyweight options like air conditioning you add. Our truck had extra cost side rails, and bed wall eye hooks are standard. Cargo room behind the seat is hurt by the small cup holding tray that actually houses tire tools. But Chevy can give you lots of interior storage space. A deep glove box, handy under dash shelf, console well, and hard sided door map pockets. The side facing jump seats are twisted slightly to the front for better leg room, but we wish the side windows would open. The Ford Ranger Super Cab's cargo box is just over six feet long. Like the Chevy, the wheel wells are flat for easier loading. Standard payload, 1,330 pounds. It was the only truck to have post holes to hold on tall loads. With the STX trim, you get a cargo light and a cargo cover for hiding valuables behind the seat in space that was the most usable of the group. There's a shelf above the deep glove box along with useful door pockets. It's easy getting into the side-mounted jump seats, but like the Chevy, the side windows are fixed. Our Isuzu Space Cab has a slightly longer cargo box than Ford or Chevy's. Payload rating is 1,600 pounds, but that includes riders, and it decreases as you add options. Like all five, it has tie-downs in the bed walls. The inside wall of the cargo box seems the flimsiest of the group. All our trucks had at least one seat that moves to help you get into the jump seats, but the sliding passenger seat on the space cab left the most step-up room. The tall roof means lots of headroom, but there's not much room for wider bodies. The Isuzu, like all the imports, have opening rear windows, a nice touch. Like the Ford, the Isuzu has a cover for the narrow bay. Dash storage includes a wide glove box, cup holder, a cubby hole in the console, and door pockets. The Mazda B2000 had the optional bed liner that also has tie-downs built in. It'll secure the standard payload capacity of 1,400 pounds. Inside, there's plenty of room for luggage behind the seats, a big glove box, cup holder, and plenty of dash storage. Unlike the others, the Mazda's jump seats face forward, making them suitable for children or kitty car seats. At least the side windows open. The Nissan Hardbody has a six foot, one inch long bed with a 1,400 pound rating. Like the rest, it uses double wall construction. We like their most unique idea, spring-loaded tie-downs. Eye hooks are also provided in the bed walls. The side windows open and a sliding rear window is included in the King's SE package. Room in the back is good for two side-facing adults. Hard door pockets are provided, along with a deep glove box. Storage behind the seat was among the best of the group, but we did miss a cargo cover. Since light trucks often substitute for passenger cars these days, performance is more and more important. Not many come close to good car performance, but our crop of extended cabs shows the gap is closing. 
Chevy's S10 Maxi Cab is the first of the V6 contingent. With a throttle body injected 2.8 liter connected to a four speed automatic, it discharges a peak of 125 horsepower and 150 pound feet of torque. But it's slow to rev, which left it with only a third place finish in the 0 to 60 contest at 12.8 seconds. However, it was also slow to downshift, so its 5.5 second passing time tied for last. That's still within an acceptable range. Handling was somewhat more unsettling. Lots of plow caused heavy steering and transitions. However, it did act extremely stable, and the rear end never once came unglued. Braking performance was reasonable, if not exceptional, with some rear lock and slide. Stopping distances after six tries were 136 feet. Pedal pressure was good with little fade. The Ford Ranger was up next, powered by a multi-point fuel-injected V6 rated at 140 horsepower and 170 pound-feet of torque. With marginally the strongest and the smoothest engine on our test, it was no surprise that it was also the fastest, 0 to 60, 12.5 seconds. Even with its four-speed automatic, passing was only a shade slower than the best manual at 4.7 seconds. Its Eagle GT tires, which come with the STX package, also helped its handling. The unloaded rear was docile. Our only real complaint was power steering that couldn't keep up with fast wheel cutting. Brakes were extremely easy to control with only minor rear lock. The 135-foot stopping distance fell midway in the pack. Our Isuzu Space Cab came equipped with a 2.3-liter four-cylinder rated at 96 horsepower with 123 pound-feet of torque. It's exceptionally torquey when combined with its standard five-speed manual gearbox, so 0 to 60 was a good 13.2 seconds. Passing time was best of the group, 4.3 seconds. Handling was expectedly lazy with lots of roll, but some felt it was more nimble than the two American-made trucks. The rear end never felt like it would become uncontrollable without plenty of warning. But braking was less impressive, with some lock and rear end slot. The Pup's 137-foot stopping average from 55 was worst of the group, but that's still only five feet longer than the best. The Mazda SE5 had the smallest engine, a two-liter four-cylinder with output of only 80 horsepower and 110 pound-feet of torque. But even though its zero to 60 time was the slowest at 13.9 seconds, it made a stronger showing in passing at 5.1 seconds. The light over the front wheel's engine probably had a lot to do with the Mazda being judged our best handler. It was very nimble and could be driven most like a car. Brakes were good too. It tied with the best for the shortest distance at 132 feet. There wasn't any noticeable rear end lockup or instability, but there was more brake fade than on the other pickups. Nissan makes the only V6 powered import truck using a detuned version of the overhead cam 3 liter found in the 300 ZX. Ratings were similar to the Fords at 140 horses and 166 pound feet of torque. So was initial acceleration. Zero to 60 was 12.7 seconds with a manual, which made for second best. But power poops out early, so the hard body tied for pokiest passing at 5.5 seconds. In our slalom test, the Nissan would jump into a turn quickly and then just as quickly scrub off the most speed. That kind of plow, power steering that couldn't keep pace, and lots of soft spring body roll made this hard body a handful. It did redeem itself in braking though. Stopping distances tied Mazdas at 132 feet. It was secure with minimal premature rear lockup. But the final measure of how a pickup operates day to day is to put performance to the test of highway drivability. The bow tie brigade's entry wasn't a favorite for long trips. The cabin may be roomy with lots of foot room, but the ride is quite harsh. The S10 rides like a truck and we don't mean that as a compliment. Its smooth styling does keep wind noise at a low 68 decibels, yet the Chevy's test mileage of 21 and its 42-foot turning circle were the poorest of the group. Our Ford Ranger had extremely comfortable front sport seats with plenty of foot room. On the road, its ride was most like a car's. It was the least tiring on long trips. True to Ford form, sound level readings at 55 were the lowest at 67 decibels. The powerful engine and overdrive automatic transmission combined for a test mileage of 23 miles per gallon. The Ranger's wide 41-foot turning circle was typical of the group. We found the Isuzu Space Cab's cabin comfortable as long as you don't need too much leg room. But thanks to a stiff ride, a buzzy engine, somewhat flimsy feel, and the group's highest sound level of 72 decibels, the Space Cab was only in demand for moderate length commutes. 
On the plus side, mileage was very good at 26, a tie for second best. The 40-foot turning circle was also shorter than all but one other. Mazda's Cab Plus cabin is comfortable, but not nearly as roomy as either the Ford or Chevy. Legroom is fine unless you're over 5 foot 8. Mazda ride is smooth even though bumps transmitted quite a thump through the cabin. Long trips in the Mazda left us reasonably fresh. Sound readings were second highest at 69 decibels. Still good even for a car. The Mazda's smallest engine gave it the best fuel economy at 28. A wide 41 foot turning circle was the same as the Rangers. The Nissan King Cab also fared well on the open road. Seats were firm with great support. Front leg room in this redesigned Nissan was the best of all the imports and second only to the Fords. The ride was soft, a bit too soft, yet the gushy ride produced little fatigue. Tar strip thumps were more noticeable than in the Ford, even with a low sound reading of 68 decibels. Mileage was a surprisingly high 26. Turning circle was a surprisingly small 39 feet, and that's the group's tightest. But for a lot of small pickup buyers, a final choice will come down to value for the money or affordability. We considered two prices here. First, we took the price of each brand's sportiest stretch cab model with the largest available engine. Then we added the most frequently ordered options, jump seats, air conditioning, power steering, and stereo cassette radio. The second price was the actual sticker of the truck we tested. The Chevy S10 Tahoe Maxi Cab will set you back about $11,000 nominally equipped, but a long list of extras including overdrive automatic, power windows, side rails, and a lot more sends its price to $13,300. The Ford Ranger STX Super Cab carries a slightly higher tab of $11,500. That's with our preferred equipment list. But Ford offers option packages that include things like Eagle GT tires, four-speed auto transmission, and much more. So even with a reasonable test price of $12,200, our Ranger was loaded. The Isuzu Pup LS Space Cab comes with most of our wish list standard. It'll cost you about $10,400. Our truck had only a few extra items on board for a total cost of $10,700. But the Mazda B2000 SE5 Cab Plus cost even less, under $9,500. And that's with our list of required equipment. It's definitely the cheapest. However, our test truck didn't have either power steering or the cassette deck and actually cost about $9,000. Any way you slice it, the Nissan SE King Cab cost the most. Its comparably equipped tab is about $12,100, but that includes a sports package with a sunroof. The truck we tested cost $13,500 and includes power windows and mirrors, super stereo, and a rear step bumper. And that's it five mid-size extended cab pickups, and five categories. Which one will get the nod? Beth, thanks. Craig? Okay, while we go off and add up our scores, we're going to turn things over to Pat Goss for his views on how to keep these pickups working better for you. Pat? Thanks, John. Now, as far as pickup trucks are concerned, it's amazing how popular they've become in the last few years. You know, people use them for everything from heavy hauling to second cars, and in a lot of cases, even primary transportation. And they can do very well in all categories. But there are some things that you can do to make the pickup truck well, more enjoyable and make it last longer and look better. One of the first things that you want to do is right back here. The bed of the pickup truck, if you use it for any kind of hauling at all, well, the bed is what takes the beating. Now, one of the best things that you can do for the bed of your pickup truck is to buy a bed liner. One of these plastic liners that encases the inside of the bed and protects it from those nicks and dings and scrapes that they get when you're hauling loads. Now, these do a very good job and they'll keep the bed looking like new, providing you give them a little help. And that help is very simple. At least twice a year, pull the bed liner out of the truck and clean underneath it. See, they get dirt and moisture under there, and this dirt and moisture can damage the paint and cause rust. So take it out a couple times a year, clean it thoroughly, dry it out under the bed liner, and you'll be amazed at how nice the bed of the truck will remain. Now the next thing that you have that really takes a beating on a pickup truck, well, that's the tailgate itself, right along the top of it. Heavy loads and long loads lots of times wind up laying on the top of the, the tailgate, and they get dented. Well, here's a stainless steel protector that goes over the top of the tailgate 
and this is what takes the beating instead of the tailgate. Keeps it looking good, keeps it fitting good so that it'll open and close properly, generally throughout the life of the truck. Now, we're talking about loads in the vehicle. One of the things that you have to make sure of is that you load the vehicle properly, and that is to get your load toward the front of the pickup bed or uh, better yet, keep it as centered as you can ahead of the axles of the car. Don't take a load such as we have here and put it clear at the back of the bed because this puts a tremendous strain on the rear springs. It also makes the vehicle quite difficult to steer. So you want the load toward the front. Now, along with this, you may wind up with something that's bulky such as we have here and you don't want this load shifting. That could be damaging to whatever you're carrying. It also could be very dangerous for you in the pickup cab. So one of the things that you want to do is to make sure that any bulky load, that it's tied down. And you can do that with tie downs such as we have here. These are standard equipment on some pickup trucks. They're optional on others, but then there are some where you can't even get them. Now what can you do there? Well, you could add tie downs, but that may not be the best solution. Here's something that you can put on the pickup truck that will really help. This is a box rail. These come in sets and they can be used to tie loads to. The only thing is you have to make sure that the particular box rail that you buy, that it, well, that it bolts completely through the, the steel of the bed itself and that it has plates or big washers to keep the bolts from pulling out. It has to be sturdy. And with that, you can use them to tie your loads down. They also look pretty good, too. All right, now, here's something else that can be quite beneficial. This is a running board. You know, running boards are very helpful as far as getting into the higher pickup trucks. They give you a step to make it easier to get up into the, the pickup truck that, well, maybe sits quite a bit higher than a car. Now, they also have another advantage, and that is right here. They have splash guards or stone guards on the ends of them that keep the stones from the wheels of the truck from damaging the paint and the body on the truck itself. Here's something else. You know, good mirrors on many trucks are an option. If you're ordering a new truck, make sure that you get the good truck mirrors. You know, if your truck doesn't have them, you might want to add them to it. They're available aftermarket, and they're vitally important for the safe operation of the truck. You have to be able to see properly in order to make lane changes and so on. And here's something that is very popular. We're seeing a lot of these these days. This is a bug deflector. Fits on the hood of the vehicle and helps keep the bugs off of the windshield. Well, it also has a much more important function, and that is it helps protect the pickup truck windshield from stones. See, stones are very prone to hitting truck windshields because they're more vertical than they are on a passenger car. And here's something that's really slick. For years, we've had sliding rear windows in pickup trucks that open to allow ventilation. Well, here's one that is electrically operated and the entire window goes up and down for good ventilation. Really nice. Uh, accessory to put on your particular truck. Okay, now you can take all of these things or any portion of them, you can put them together to make your pickup truck a real joy to own and drive. Thanks, Pat. And now for our summary, the results of each of our five categories and our overall winner. In our first category, sporty appearance, the Chevrolet S10 Maxi Cab looked the part best. And even with its confusing stripes, the Mazda B2000 Cab Plus was next. It was followed closely by the macho Nissan King Cab, the Ford Ranger Super Cab, and the Isuzu Pup Space Cab. For utility, we picked the most traditional truck in the group, the V6 Ford Ranger. It barely beat the new Nissan King Cab and a domestic rival, the Chevrolet S10. In the battle between four cylinders, the Isuzu topped the Mazda. The performance prize also went to a six-cylinder truck, the same one in fact. The Ford Ranger's top acceleration and good combination of handling and brakes made it the leader of the pack. The Mazda's fine handling was enough for second spot. Chevy, Nissan, and Isuzu filled out the order. 
In drivability, the Ranger, with its excellent comfort and quiet ride, copped first place again. The Nissan notched up a solid second, though, followed by Mazda, Chevy, and Isuzu in that order. As for affordability, first place choice is no surprise. It's the inexpensive Mazda Cab Plus. Dollar for dollar, the most for the least. The Ford Ranger slipped, but only to second. Nissan's higher priced packages dropped it to third, a slightly better value than the Isuzu Space Cab or the last place Chevy S10. And that brings us to the overall winner. As you can probably tell, most category rankings were very close, the closest of any comparison test we've done. Differences between any of them will pretty much be a matter of buyer taste, but there has to be a winner here. And there is, with three first place finishes in utility, performance, and drivability, it's the Ford Ranger STX Super Cab. Next, with a top spot in value, the Mazda B2000 SE5 Cab Plus. Nissan chalked up third place, with the SE King Cab finishing near the top in both utility and drivability. The Chevy S10 Tahoe Maxi Cab was tops in appearance, but it lost ground in value and drivability and came in fourth. Last but hardly least, the Isuzu Pup LS Space Cab. It's a useful design, and even with its fifth place finish, it has a lot to offer. We don't mind telling you that this was the toughest comparison we've ever done. But if you'd like to linger a while longer over our results, you can send for a transcript of our pickup comparison. Just send $3 to MotorWeek Pickup Test, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. That's $3 to MotorWeek Pickup Test, Owings Mills, Maryland, 21117. So good hauling, and we'll see you here next week on MotorWeek. Motor Week was proudly brought to you by Prestone Antifreeze and Coolant and by Prestone Super Flush Products.